All right, everyone, thanks for uh, rejoining us. We're gonna get started. It's my pleasure to introduce Sarah Adair. Sarah is Director of Public Policy for Duke Energy. She's also a member of the Southeast Hydrogen Energy Alliance Board of Directors. She leads the Federal Electrification and Emerging Technology Policy for Duke Energy, including advanced clean energy technologies, such as clean hydrogen and long duration energy storage. So she's kind of on top of both of these topics coming up uh, on this session today. <clears throat> so she was previously Director of Environmental Policy Affairs in uh, North Carolina. Uh, she uh, was a senior policy associate at Duke Energy's Nicholas Institute, and she holds a master's in environmental management degree from Duke University and a bachelor's from Northwestern. Sarah, if you would lead us into our featured speaker. Thank, thank you, David, and good afternoon to everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here and, and an honor to introduce our featured speaker this afternoon, um, Dr. Sunita Satchipal. Um, Dr. Sachapal is Director of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy's Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technologies Office within the U.S. Department of Energy. Um, I will let you read about her many accomplishments uh, in the bio that E4 provided um, in, in the materials for, for today's event. I know we're all anxious to make the most of our short time with her um, this afternoon, given all the exciting work that's going on in hydrogen and that we heard about earlier um, on the panel that, that Scott um, moderated. So with that brief introduction, uh, Dr. Satya Paul, um, I want to thank you for your time this afternoon. We're so pleased that you could join us and I'll go ahead and turn the floor over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Sarah and David. And just wanted to thank all of the organizers and just all of you for the leadership, especially at the regional level. So this is a really exciting time. And I'll start with just the big picture um, in terms of the U.S energy landscape. I think most are probably familiar with this, but you can see the renewables here. We have quite a diverse um, set of renewables. And actually last year for the first time, renewables surpassed coal in terms of primary energy consumption. And you can see nuclear and, but you can see we rely still very heavily on fossil fuels. So I think the main message um, that I wanted to convey is that sense of urgency and um, Many goals, concrete goals here showing uh, two of the administration's priorities net zero by 2050. Uh, also, you know, cutting in half by 2030 and a completely clean grid by 2035. And the other major one I wanted to highlight is our environmental justice priorities and ensuring benefits. For instance, Justice 40, where 40% of our federal benefits. Um, need to be in disadvantaged communities. So this again is a really high priority in everything we do. And hydrogen is just one part of a very broad portfolio of activities in the toolbox. And so if you're not familiar, we do have a DOE wide hydrogen program plan that's been published um, almost a year ago. And then we coordinate across offices. So EERE renewables, fossil with CCS nuclear, Electricity, ARPA E, Office of Science. Um, and we, and so our, our office, my office coordinates across all, also with other agencies. And we provide funding to um, industry, universities, labs, and, and so forth. And so the, the top three priorities are really getting to low cost and clean hydrogen. Obviously, we have to address delivery and storage and then end use applications at scale. And as well as enabling activities like workforce development, codes and standards. And so the scale is really what I wanted to focus on here. Uh, and a big kudos to all of your efforts. But this uh, picture, if you haven't seen it, is represents our H2 at scale initiative, which was developed with our national labs and industry and broad stakeholders um, nearly five years ago. And it really depicts that sort of Swiss Army knife view of hydrogen and its versatility. So all of the domestic resources um, and we have today's conventional grid and conventional natural gas infrastructure. But if we would produce hydrogen, we could produce hydrogen. We could store it, either feed it back to the grid or dispatchable power and then use it for multiple applications across sectors. So it really gives you that additional versatility and optionality and it can be more dispatchable. And so what we're looking at are really the, the top three priorities are industry and chemicals. So this is where the hard to decarbonize sectors such as steel, 
alone, for instance, accounts for almost 8% of global um, emissions, transportation, especially heavy duty trucks, and then power, especially long duration energy storage. So unfortunately, I'll have to miss the next um, session since I've already stopped at one o'clock. But to give you an idea, in the US, we produce a little over 10 million metric tons of hydrogen per year, mostly from natural gas. But we see scenarios where we could potentially produce even five times more. And also to give you an idea, if we produced another 10 million metric tons, that would basically double today's solar and wind deployment. You know, if we use solar and wind um, just to produce that hydrogen as, as an example, and then a lot of potential in terms of jobs and economic benefit. And so if you ask, you know, where are we today with hydrogen and fuel cells? We update this. This is already out of date, but we update it periodically. But the key is that there are thousands of fuel cells commercially available, backup power, forklifts, um, buses, vehicles, mostly in California. And you can see most uh, regions have hydrogen from natural gas. We have some big flagship projects here. Um, and then we just started um, monitoring the um, electrolyzer installation. So it's only about 170 megawatts so far, but a lot of announcements uh, planned. Four gigawatts actually is the world's largest in Saudi Arabia. And then we have almost 2,000 miles of uh, dedicated hydrogen pipeline, mostly in the Gulf Coast. We have three uh, geological caverns, the world's largest in Texas. And then many states have plans for hydrogen and for infrastructure. So that gives you a snapshot. But the key is really getting the cost down and getting to scale. And so as a reminder, President Biden in April um, at the climate summit asked our Secretary of Energy, you know, what more can we do to really accelerate to speed the development of critical technologies to tackle the climate crisis? And that was the beginning of the Energy Earthshot Initiative. So these are bold, ambitious targets, so similar to the moonshot from over half a century ago. And the very first that our secretary announced was the hydrogen shot. And so this is, a, again, a bold, um, ambitious, clearly articulated target to galvanize the entire community. And it's one, one, one. So one dollar for one kilogram of clean hydrogen in one decade. And today hydrogen is a dollar fifty or less with low cost natural gas. And so the key, again, is to be competitive and a sustainable from a sustainable perspective, we have to still get the cost down. And so we had the summit. Some of you may have attended. Again, thousands attended over two days. We had Secretary Granholm, um, Secretary Kerry, Bill Gates. We had 100 speakers, CEOs. It was, it was great attendance. And we asked you know, for a lot of feedback. And I thought I'd share just one example when we asked, you know, what are the, the main barriers? And you can see cost uh, is big here, as well as lack of infrastructure, public awareness or understanding. Um, and you can see, again, a lot of other uh, smattering of other issues that need to be addressed if we're really going to get to hydrogen at scale to have impact. And so what we're doing next is looking at all the possible pathways of getting to that 111. So you'll hear a lot more detail, but for instance, electrolysis, Again, there are a lot of numbers out there, but this is our baseline 2020 number. You can see cost of electricity. This is at $50 a megawatt hour is a big piece of that. Um, we reduce that to 30, then 20. Um, you can see capital cost here. And we're also looking at you know, base load nuclear to increase the utilization factor. Thermal conversion is also another example with CCS, of course, if we're going to be looking at natural gas reforming or gasification with co-gasification with biomass or waste, um, pyrolysis might be another approach. And so again, a lot of this analysis to look at how can we get the cost down, including with advanced pathways, it's really all hands on deck at this point to see what approaches can, can get us there. And so um, I thought I would really emphasize the next piece, which is collaboration and the diversity, equity, inclusion aspect of everything that we do. And here also just, I've, I've used this quote a lot lately, but emphasize that it now more than ever uh, in terms of you know, this, this point that we're in, in in history is we need all hands on deck and it's not 
I think there are many scientists and engineers following the audience, and we know that no matter what you do, or no matter how hard you try, no one person can whistle a symphony. So we need the all all the stakeholders, so industry and investors, hydrogen producers and end users and academia, national labs, and uh, the various states, and also all the countries. Again, hydrogen will um, play a, an integral role from a, a global perspective as well. So that's sort of the, the main message here to bring uh, all, all hands on deck. And I wanted to show one example, which is, um, and you, you may have seen some of these maps, but you can go to this website and you can click on any of these spots and see which regions are, are considered you know, disadvantaged communities. And in everything we do, we will be encouraging broader engagements, um, especially with um, you know, the DEI community. So whether it's funding opportunities or stakeholder engagement and so forth, we, we do um, want to request your help and everyone's help um, of how we can do a better job in this. And then I did want to give a shout out to one project, for instance, uh, that we're funding uh, with CTE. This is an example of UPS hydrogen fuel cell truck, which actually doubles the range compared to the battery truck. And you can see concrete metrics in terms of savings. And it's not just CO2 emissions, but also um, NOx and criteria pollutants which can impact, uh, you know, benefit disadvantaged communities. And this is, we'll have 15 uh, in a disadvantaged community. So I thought I'd show just one example, but we'll continue to be looking for uh, other examples and addressing resiliency, or re reliability, obviously jobs and, and benefit, concrete benefit. And then in addition for collaboration, wanted to emphasize the global collaboration. I'm not sure how many were able to uh, listen in on the COP uh, events, but we did have a big announcement uh, just a couple of days ago uh, at the U.S. Pavilion on launching the Hydrogen Twin Cities initiative. So you can Google that. And we had a number of other events. Hydrogen is you know front and center on, in terms of so many countries and seen as as critical for meeting uh, their global climate goals because we can't rely just on the clean electrons. You'll need a molecule, a carbon-free molecule. Uh, to help decarbonize and many studies out there from, you know, 10 to even 25% of global emissions reductions will uh, rely on hydrogen. So there are a lot of international uh, activities. We're very involved at the U.S. now that we're back in the Paris Climate Agreement. Thought I'd highlight just two, which um, include um, this IPHE codes and standards, harmonizing codes and standards. There's a compendium. It's just published. Again, you can go to IPHE.net to look at where there are gaps. So obviously we don't want different protocols for fueling, you know, different countries. Um, and then another major effort uh, with over 20 countries is a common analytical framework as we facilitate international trade of hydrogen, just understanding what is the greenhouse gas footprint of hydrogen, depending on how it's produced and uh, developing that, that common analytical framework and the boundary conditions and so forth. So, you know, across the countries, uh, we're, we're talking about the same thing when it comes to clean hydrogen and eventually clean hydrogen standards and so forth. So finally, um, the next steps are looking very strategically at uh, across the, the country. And again, it's great to see the regional work that you're doing, but look at where the solar and wind is, the green shows the nuclear plants, uh, you can see natural gas, SMR, CCS, because obviously that will play a, a, a critical role. And so the next steps really are uh, next week, of course, after the, the president signs uh, the bipartisan infrastructure framework, we're planning a lot more stakeholder outreach and webinars and going through in detail all the hydrogen provisions that are in there. So please stay tuned. Um, but the key, you know, the top three priorities now in terms of what we'll be doing nationally and then working you know with the regions and, and uh, states is continue to accelerate r d we still have to reduce cost across the the board and then de-risk some of those demonstrations uh enable deployments and then look you know very strategically at the scale up uh, obviously with the hubs and, and so forth there's a really good opportunity um but we would like to ensure it's done, you know, strategically so we have concrete impact, not just in the near term, but enable long term benefits. And then obviously workforce development, 
uh, all of these activities are also really critical priorities. So feel free to, um, well, we have a lot of resources. If you're not signed up to our newsletter, uh, again, we'll plan to do um, H2IQ webinar. We, we do these monthly webinars, a lot of tools uh, available, and we had nearly 2,000 people at our merit review uh, just a few months ago where we launched Hydrogen Shot, but feel free to save the date there as well to stay in touch with everything that we're doing. So with that, thank you again so much for the invitation and for all that you're doing. So I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, um, Dr. Sachapal. That was um, a really wonderful overview and very timely one. So we, we really appreciate you, you being here again today. Um, I, I think, David, you said Scott had a, a question. I'll um, maybe turn it over to him uh, to ask his first and then uh, use my moderator's prerogative to ask the, the last one before we uh, let you go. Yes, yeah, Sarah, Scott's not back from uh, his other session, but uh, I know Bill Brown and Thomas Cope from Siemens, Bill from Eight Rivers Capitals on, they, they may wish to pose a quick question. They're from the uh, hydrogen panel earlier this morning. And while they're, while they're gathering themselves. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Yes, well, first of all, I loved your, I loved your mention of the symphony. Uh, and I particularly thought, and I said that this symphony, this particular symphony is Eroica. And uh, for, probably means nothing to most people on here, but Eroica was the transition symphony between the Viennese classical era and the Romantic era. And it was, so the point is, yes, it's it's about a symphony and it's about Eroica. We've got a whole new world of music going forward. So, so I love that, but ap apologies for being such the music nerd. Um, <laughs> but... Um, I think the the um, the honor piece is is that I would really urge you to on the preceding slide your one 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 slide. Uh, you had uh, you know to our yeah that that one the one after that one uh, no after later there that one all pathways with potential. Um, to include on that particular slide, I do think that there is an integrated SMR approach to this with CCS. And I know you probably weren't around when I uh, spoke uh, earlier, but the cogeneration aspect of producing electricity at the same time producing uh, hydrogen, and you'll see in the notes on the side, uh, is, um, is it was, I guess, Ben Cross uh, mentioned that you know, 60 odd percent of all, of all thermal energy goes up the stack in thermal power plants or is wasted. And the goal here is if we can harness that 60 odd percent of, of the, the wasted energy to uh, make uh, to make hydrogen production uh, much cheaper, then you're going to get to 111 with today's technology without creating new technologies. Uh, it's going to be much, much easier because you're co-genning both hydrogen and power and using same assets for producing both. Hmm. And so I, I mean, I'm happy to go through that with you and, and how we get there. But um, I think it's an important thing that's uh, that's often missed. And and when you start going that that path of SMR, you then uh, are when you get your um, when you get your feedstock from biomass, you now go massively carbon negative. And Sarah, yeah, I, know, yeah. I definitely, I, and sorry, Bill, I, I missed your presentation, but I'd be happy to talk more and definitely agree with that cogen concept. And we even, um, and, and, and of course, with, you know, the CCS and uh, as a piece of that, and we also had demonstrated the world's first, you know, you know, I, I know what you're saying in terms of SMR, but even without SMR, you may remember, demonstrated the world's first tri generation with a high temperature fuel cell that co-produces power and heat and uh, a slipstream of hydrogen. So I agree. I think your, your whole concept of, you know, systems and systems view and cogen, that, that is, is definitely included in the, in, is one of the pathways. So thanks for bringing that up. And I'd be happy to look at your, your slides since I missed your presentation. And, and Sarah, and, we, we need to close out. All right. Thanks, thanks, David. And, and thank you, um, Dr. Sestrapal, for joining us again this afternoon. Yeah, thank you to all of you. And Sunita, I'll be in touch with regard to your slides. We'd love to have a copy of the deck to distribute. Thank you. Yeah.